So, cool. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Hello. Episode two of Meticulous Talks. I'm Chris Gords, and joining me is Solving Problems. Yo. So, in the intervening time uh, between our last stream, we've had, I guess, really one and a half new cards, kind of. We have one new card and one rarity for a card we already talked about. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. this is probably going to be a much shorter stream than the last one, since we have a lot less to talk about, but we'll uh, say what we have to say, I guess. So, uh, you want to say anything before we jump right into it, Solving? Um, according to my laptop, the stream's still offline. <laughs> Uh, well, that's certainly something worth saying. Give me a second here. <laughs> that is definitely a worrying. Um, uh, for according me, to my on. laptop, the stream's still offline. Indeed. Give me a second. Uh, well, for me, it's up, actually. You've refreshed it, I imagine. Then. Yeah, and it's still offline, apparently. Oh, it's finally appeared. There we go. All right. Must be some lag for getting across the ocean. I Something like that. Anyway. Um... So then, uh, anything else to say before we jump into it? Um, the screen share is not working apparently. Screen share is not working, which is just great. <laughs> Come All on! Right. If my internet just decided to die, <laughs> that would be just perfect. Let me just try it again here. So I stopped. Screen, screen one. Have it? We are blessed with technical difficulties every every time. <laughs> oh, beautiful. So do you have it then or? Still just your camera. Oh, crap. It's just great. Loves me. Oh, dear. Alrighty. For those people out there who uh, may have done us during the past, this is why you do test streams. So we did one last week, and it worked out just fine. So I had thought... Be okay. Thought everything was going to be fine, but uh, yeah. it likes breaking now. Um, so, still just a camera for you, right? Hey, okay, I'm, I'm going to try start, uh, starting a new call for us then. Okay. Okay, so hanging up. Paul? Okay, you can hear me? Yep. Radio. Share screen. Hey, that wasn't annoying at all. <laughs> Got it? Alrighty, good stuff. Let me just uh, confirm. Oh. See that when it changes right away? Yep. Alrighty, outstanding. Okay, then. Everything's working. Let's go. 
do this. <laughs> Idea. So here's the image. What we had come up on Twitter this past day. We have one new card on the right. One card we already talked about, which we now know is uncommon, over on the left. Yes. So what do you want to talk about first? Uh, changing Barricade being uncommon, I, I'm genuinely surprised, and it puts into question what the rest of those cards will be rarity-wise, in terms of the ones when they were spoiled without rarities. Mm. Um, gonna hate it in Limited, gonna want to stab the guy who gets two at the pre-release, things like that, maybe even three. Uh, but the main thing of note is the Squizzard. Yep. Ooh. Another... It, it kind, of, kind of feels like it's trying to nerf epics. I don't think it does it good enough, because four is not a big number. It's true. Like, it's... It's it's, it's got that R R M A S P feel, right? Because R M A S P says um, the troublemakers can't be uncovered. Covered. Problem. Yes, and, and, and this is very similar. Not Which, quite the same, but very similar. For if they printed our Maspi with that fast line of text, then I would be like, cool, they have a really, really nice card for Indeed. preventing that deck. But this one is just a little bit too small, and if you go second, is probably pointless anyway. Because of yeah. the specific can't play Troublemakers. If they've already played it, they uncover it, and yours yes. doesn't do anything anyway. And it's just kind of like, uh Yeah. Not quite as good. <laughs> not, not terrible. It's... I wouldn't say it's, like, really, really bad or anything. Yeah. I'd but... say it's it's a nice card against aggro. We'll go, oh, were well, you going to use Bluna to beat that up and everything? Well, minus three. Mm, yes. But... When you read him, it feels like he's trying to stop epics from doing something, and he just kind of doesn't, which is a shame. That's how I read the card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, fair to say. Now, the, the other thing that's, that, that's worth pointing out, though, is, like, in Limited, it's, it's obviously no change like Barricade, but it's, it's another troublemaker that's okay-ish. And so now we have... Yeah. N n now we have two... Uncommon troublemakers, sure, pretty good. It's it I starts to give us a, a ones sense, are, yeah, of what the what the pool is going to look like, and if if slower decks are going to be a lot better, and yeah, limited style this time around. Which I don't mind the idea of. That sounds cool. Yeah, like we we yeah. we, we, we said last week we have the Twilight main and the Rarity main. Are gonna depend on how how how, how much troublemaker support they get, and um, yeah. So I, far, it's not terrible. Just give me one second here. I actually need to go. Do not disturb on my Skype because that was unfortunate. I just quit it. <laughs> I just completely get rid of it whenever I yeah I should do anything like do this that as well. I Call pass of the charm. I'm gonna make a that. habit of that as well. We are all learning things. With this. Okay, but yeah, yeah. Squizzard. It. Yeah. I, I. I just don't think it does enough. Certainly underwhelming compared to the card that is uh, yeah. sitting beside. That barricade. Oh my gosh. Yes. That's. Uh, uh, both of us last week said we thought it, it, it was going to be rare, or at yeah. least rare. At least for limited sake. <laughs> yeah. And now, um, because yeah, oh, maybe, the possibility that I'll see it frequently makes me makes me a little sad. <laughs> indeed, at, at the three uncommons per pack, four packs draft, you can expect to find at least one, <laughs> and yeah. sometimes two. Pre-release or. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. I, I don't yeah. think I've, I've ever like, actually. Sorry, go ahead. Changing barricade feels like an auto include. Squizzard feels like. In terms of uh, limited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's maybe uh, Ross. Definitely not a first picker. Yeah, like 
Because Barricade, to me, even if you're playing aggro in Limited, you just may as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's you if you need Troublemakers for some reason. Uh, always good to get that tempo. Um, yeah. Oh. Well, <coughs> uh, that's all the new cards. So, uh, you want to? So, last week we said uh, we were gonna try to build some decks with the new cards. Um, Solving built a Fluttershy deck. I built an Applejack deck. Because uh, pink yellow is my home. Even if it's not very good. <laughs> so do you, do you want to go through oh. your deck first, uh, Solving? Yeah, do you have it digitally on yours? Because obviously I'm not streaming any images. Yep, yep, don't worry. Here it is right here. Cool. So for uh, <laughs> for the stream, obviously, Fluttershy is not on Ponyhead yet. So Not on Ponyhead anymore. Yeah. As uh, is... Uh, as is the parents card, which I'd probably test as a two of if it yes. was actually on Ponyhead. Yeah, but the because uh, it would be very interesting. Yes. The rest of the, of the list that you sent me as the original deck is here. It's all present. Yes, and there is such a huge uh, to be tested list for a thing like this. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. So let's get to explaining card choices quickly. Mm -hmm. So Lily, Pinky, Kevin, uh, Battle Snakes. Breezies and Lemon Hearts are all the quick entry stuff. For Pink, Lily is probably easily the best aggro entry card because you just make use of something at home that you don't need anymore and get to confront, and it it makes double confronting really easy sometimes. It's like kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pinky is a three for three that also works with Conductor's Baton, which I've always enjoyed, so I thought I'd test in this again. Um, it. I've just been using it in pink, yellow in general. Even though the deck itself isn't powerful, I know that the pinky is good as entry because it ends up having four power and an eccentric two, which you really can't complain about. Very true, actually. As a Now, yes. in terms of the yellow stuff, there's a lot I need to test because this is the first time I've built yellow without going, I need to run a butt-ton of critters so my main will flip for zero action tokens and I'll always be able to pay one to move it. And I've always liked Breezies, because the idea that it never really goes home unless your opponent inter like intervenes with it seems powerful, especially with um, Baton giving it, like, three power. Yeah. When, it's with, when Pinky has Baton out, because uh, if you just played a three for three, Baton wouldn't synergize with her, but she has one cost, so the Baton does pump her to four power. Yes, but but uh, but Tom cares about power. Uh, but, yeah, but, but Tom cares I, about I cost, love I love Baton. Yeah, yeah, I love Baton because the cost specific thing, especially with tokens, Baton plus tokens is like a match made in heaven because their cost doesn't exist, thus it's counted as zero. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, Marble, for yeah. example, is a oh. super card. Marble, oh my Baton. gosh, four power for one action token. That's fair, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite yellow cards that has been printed recently, just because one power for th one action token for three power is just crazy, even if it's only for confronting. Yeah. And so the general idea of the deck is you got to be fairly aggressive. So I've been trying to um, like put a lot of aggressive cards in, but also you're, I've been trying to utilize Pink's ability to dismiss friends and Yellow's uh, hate of resources and troublemakers. So that even against certain deck types, you can kind of always get through. So like for Troublemakers, you've got Battle Snakes, the Discord, and Repulsor Blast, and Cardboard Box, because Epics, you always need to stick Cardboard Box on their on their main character or you automatically lose. Yes, the And then even the Snips and Snail kind of hates on Troublemakers because of replacing problems and how everything works with that. Which is quite useful. Uh, you've obviously got Let's Get This Party started, because the more cards, the better. And then, using Pink, you've got, you gain stuff like Food Fight, and a card I definitely want to test is Derpy, that when you cutie mark it, it uh, dismisses a friend. I just couldn't fit it in this list, because I just wanted to put cards I really like in it, especially that Fluttershy. I've been playing with it for a long time, and it is just hilarious, because it suffers from what I call Guidance Counselor Syndrome, where you can use it to confront is used on your opponent's turn instead. 
which is why Guidance Counselor was so insane, because you use its three power to confront and then also get rid of an action token, which is not fair. Oh, yeah. yeah. The deck's idea is very simple, and right now it's suffering from a thing I always do when I'm testing, which is putting way too much entry in, um, because I'm always paranoid that if I don't put too much entry in, I won't actually get to test the deck. <laughs> I... Because too often I have it that I'm just like, oh, I didn't draw enough entry or something, and then I don't even get to tr test the deck. So in testing phase, I always end up like having nine entry on my second color, just to make sure I can actually play the deck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I don't think nine is bad. You're you're you, it's a flexible entry because you're running it with Kevin too, so it's not Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> I bet Lily, I'd I'd run even if she had like two requirement because she's that good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's what I do like about Pink Lily. It's just good. Oh, for sure. It's it's uh, been a staple of aggro since as far back as I can remember, really. Since it came out. Yeah. <laughs> you just you know because moving friends is generally inefficient in an aggro deck if you're playing lots of cheap friends. So who cares? Just retire them after they get sent home from the double face off. Yes. My favorite my favorite play is retiring marbles and then you get the power in the face off anyway. Yeah. Oh yeah. It feels sure. good. <laughs> it feels good. Now the problem deck, I've never been a hundred percent sure what to do with this because uh, I've been so used to obviously playing Critter Tribal where four of my problems have always been taken up by the Critter specific problems because they're just so good. Mm -hmm. So with this new one, I was like I was thinking on it for a while, and I've always liked Equal or Else just because it's 4 and 6, which is something you really can't complain about. Um, under Lock and Tree was the starting problem, which I'll probably end up trying Trading Traditions version of Lock and Tree for now, because you want to move your main to the problem to start to confront it, yeah. and it's just an easy way of doing that. Um, another inbuilt bit of a uh, good old troublemaker hate is the prob the yellow problem that gives them minus two. That that was quite nice. I've always liked that one as well. That has a good ability for you. And then there's that weird one that draws cards if it's flipped there that I have put in because I had another slot. <laughs> and I couldn't quite figure out what to put there. But one I love uh, is right at Right at the end, the only pink problem that I wish had two pink instead of three, but I guess I can let it pass because Baton exists. But playing a Lily for one action token or any of the other things that cost two just for one will just be so satisfying. Like, I just want to do that. Hilarious. Yeah, it, it's very, like, as I said, it's very simple. I just spam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you say about about uh, trading traditions. I'm not entirely sure how much that gives you, but it's only to to have both pink and white on your main at the start. It's only really giving you discord. But it also gives me access to some pink one requirement cards that I could then put in the deck list because of it, rather than okay. ignoring. Fair enough. Was the general idea? That's why I'd make the variant because yeah, it would give me access to more sort of. The pink one requirement cards. I can't think of any that I was actually interested by right now. But yeah, that do that do have like little extra effects. So I could sort of get rid of Pinky or Kevin and then put in stuff with one pink requirement that do nice abilities and just Okay. I guess. Yeah, okay, that's fair, certainly. Yeah. So what's your opinion on my first draft? <laughs> well, I mean completely it's... untested first draft. No, it's it's just uh <laughs> It's got it. It's got everything that uh, sort of yellow. Ye ye sorry, that yellow and pink are good at. Um, obviously, conductor's baton is that card that like screams at you. This card should be good, and you want to keep using it. And you're, I think, you draw it and you cry. <laughs> yeah, you're hitting every friend gets hit by it, so you're doing very well on that. Uh, all your tokens by as well. So obviously, good. Um, your primary reliance is, is on yellow, so you're not going to be... Even if you miss your pink entry, you're still going to be doing okay. Um, yeah. Uh, obviously, unless um, it's a secret every pony flips off, but... 
that's that's fine. Then I cry. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that was another reason why I thought the dilemma, the yellow one, wouldn't be the worst idea? Because that thing just makes so many tokens, and if I do flip pink when I don't have it, it is an easy confront for this deck. Yeah, for sure. I'm just uh, taking a quick look at the chat to see if uh, see what's been said. We actually have a few uh, folks in there. Howdy. Any newcomers? Talking about um, Lily being broken with marble, especially when you have a baton out, meaning Lily has three power, marble has four, you eat the marble and she goes to seven. Yes. Meaning that for one action token, I could confront uh, it's a secret to every pony. <laughs> yep. In that scenario. Yeah. Just, oh. <laughs> uh, I, I always used to love uh, Lily when playing an Artavia deck, and you, you eat like a... Uh, who was that... Who was that guy that generated the tokens when you dismissed him? Um, oh, um, my magic. I'm so bad. <sighs> oh, crap. See, hey, I'm blanking completely. Oh, yeah. party favor. That's him. Party favor, that guy. Yeah, you would. It's the, it's it, the party favor that makes Earth ponies. Yeah. E eat him with Lily. He's on, and... he's on the. He's and, definitely on the to test list. Yeah, and, and then his tokens show up, and Artavia throws their power onto Lily or whatever. And then you, 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 you can play Lily for like nine or something. It goes well. <laughs> oh. Party favor, yes. Right, Pwn picked it out in the chat as well. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, you've got. Got resource. The the uh, one of on lemon hearts is a little interesting. Uh, but she's she's pretty good. I sort of looked. I looked at the yellow, and because the battle snakes was um, only one, mm -hmm. and some of the requirement like the four is quite high, and the baton I think is three. Like I wanted an extra just bit of two for yellow, and to, like lemon hearts was probably the best choice just to add to the resource dismissal. Yeah, very true. Because it was originally three beavers, and then I took out one beavers for the lemon hearts, and I was like, yeah, I think that works. Okay, yeah, that's fair. There you go. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd say it, it, it looks fairly solid. Um, fair enough on face-offs. Could be worth a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and obviously, there's the obligatory. You're playing pink, so three food fight. <laughs> well, yes, uh, that's like the only card, it's only a... card not yet specifically mentioned, but it's too good. Like, of course, you run it. Yes, I immediate dismissal is amazing. Enough said, basically. Oh no, I I destroy I destroy a thunder lane for two action tokens. Yes, Just, outstanding. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but yeah, I think it's. Uh... Looks pretty good. Just, yeah. Starting point. It is probably what I'll insta-build as soon as the set comes out and I get Lil and I get the main. Chances are the problem deck will be different when I see the problems from the new set. Because they will probably change the layout a bit. But yeah, this this will be the sort of... I don't know, what is it? Shell is probably the word that I'll be going for when but, the new uh, set comes out. Uh, and I want... And I want to force pink yellow for the third time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I know. Every last set we had the actual pink yellow cards, and I thought, oh yes, this this, this deck's going to be good finally. And... <laughs> After testing, lots and lots of the cards are underwhelming as heck. Discord's like the best one because it's easy to play and just says no to any TMs, yeah. which is really useful. Yeah, so the spike, so. uh, you play it too late for it to be insanely relevant is the problem with him. I, I, I was going to mention Spike. He seems... I always found. Yeah. But, but, he reads he's... really nicely, but it's... I just never... He never did anything good for me whenever I played him, sort of thing. It was always just too late, and I'm just there like, alright. I, I, I could have just... I could have just used the one-cost event that makes critters or something right now instead. You know, it was one of those where it was just like, he just... He reads really nicely and everything, and then it's just didn't perform well enough. But I'll probably end up testing him again in this at some point. 
fit. Because to be fair, the Super Rare Flutter doesn't really fit the entire theme. I just think it's a good card and I have a bias on it. <laughs> You're talking about uh, Stairmaster. Yeah. It doesn't really fit aggro and like it's not going to do a huge amount uh, to stop your opponents from beating troublemakers and stuff. I just think it's really good because ev any time you stop your opponent from confronting because that card's out, yes, the fact you're running the card, yeah, it's it's but, uh, yeah, it's an immediate to stop confront, and it's it's notable that it's a friend event which is repeatable rather than an event, yeah, like say popping corn or bailout, which only you can really only use it once. Now, yeah. notably, because it's a friend that's on the field, your opponent knows it's there and they can plan around it. But, yeah, but it's it is. perfectly fine as it is. <laughs> yeah, so, so, uh, certainly pros and cons to it. Uh, okay. So, well, I just see. realized I forgot the pink yellow song. That card's actually good as well. Oops. Oh, very true. Yeah. Um, it would be in the deck list somewhere. There you go. Oops. Oh. I, 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 I can actually do oh, well. it up here. <laughs> uh, pink yellow's song. Here we go. Music in the treetops. Main phase. Choose one. Look at the top two cards of problem deck and put them on the top of the bottom of that deck in any order, which you might use, but not very often. Mm -hmm. Then it, there's the fact that it's another copy of uh, Rise and Shine or whatever it is that makes the critters. And then, Flight to Retire as a friend could be relevant sometimes, especially yeah. against Epics, where they're like, well, I've got my one good friend out, and then you uh, no. And, you I've got a, and I've got a pile of tokens, so just throw one away. Oh, no, I got rid of my one, my, my token that has one power, and you lost your best thing. Yeah. yeah. Or my favorite one that I've done with it before is, the turn after your opponent does a double face-off and has meticulously picked what they want from home limit, and you just go retire another one, and they go, oh, come on! <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, do you want to see so my your Applejack? Deckless. Let's see. Sure, let's see it. So, uh, this one, obviously, is missing Applejack. Uh, also missing the three Sunset Shimmers, yes. which should be here. Um... <laughs> Real shame to not be, not have to be able to show that card off. But anyway, um, so this is relatively standard orange purple, uh, with the exception yep. of, of a few additions. I I'm really I like to tinker around with cards, and uh, Time Patrol is the one who stands out. Uh, I think as one the Time Patrol. See. Time Patrol has some of my favorite words on an ultra rare ever. That's just such an interesting and cool ability to me. It's just like. It's worse. <laughs> yes, the, 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 this was a card that when Marson Time first came out, I saw it and I was like, "Oh my god, that card's going to be great!" And I like traded to get a playset of it, and then I realized that it's not actually that great, and I, I, I was kind of sad. But, but I it's still, super fun. <laughs> I, I, I still want to try. I, I, I think as, as I test this deck, this card will probably get cut at some point. But I want to try it just to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I see you're running a synergy I hate that is Napcakes and Starlight. Oh yes, indeed. <sighs> you, you, you ever wanna you ever wanna Napcakes a Thunderlane? Uh, go ahead. I just oh I hate it. I have a friend that his deck like that is that is one of his biggest coups, and I'm just like stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, uh, it's infuriating. <laughs> But as, as for the rest of it, you, you've got uh, the relatively standard sort of purple control package. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sakura to stop the mains, Starlight for the plus two, and also the ability to instant deploy a Troublemaker if you have to. Uh, Napcakes, Darth Roll to defend your Troublemakers. Usual business. Call um, your bailout, yeah. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Call yeah. and bailout are the orange. Uh, contributions. I'm surprised that you haven't gone for the stereotypical um, throw-in of Zap to work with Dr. Hooves, just to be like, lol. <laughs> um, sorry, which card? Uh, Zap, you know the Ultra Rare from High Magic, the Chaos pay one for each frighten you want to do? Uh, oh, the... Oh, right, the... Um, 
Well, it's not Zap. It's Rainbow in a costume, but yes, yes, it's yes, yes. Zap. <laughs> yes, this one. Yeah. Fair enough. That's because the, you know that the, the, that card's yeah. fair. <laughs> that is an outstanding chaos effect. Um, yeah. It, it it I actually kind of forgot about the chaos, and I was going to be like, really, I, I don't know how I, I could ever do that with me running hoops and all, uh, but yes. I was. I saw the list. I went. Wait, no zap. Yeah, <laughs> I was just uh, legit confused, so I thought I'd bring it up. That's certainly something to consider. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll put it out there. Um, as for the orange, purple, multicolors, these two have been together since the dawn of time well. and are amazing. Um, <laughs> I, just yesterday, I, I was playing in a Skype game against a fellow who got all of his factory jacks out on like turn two, and it was it was ridiculous. a bad game for you. <laughs> Yes, it was terrible. You see, I, I had that happen to me at the um, at the Nationals. Luckily enough, party of one makes them all go away. <laughs> oh, yes, that's actually that's a fair <laughs> point, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, the fact is, a deck like this really hates um, decks that go insanely all in on removal. Mm -hmm, because a lot true. of your control is is kind of based around your friends. That's very correct, yeah. yeah. My deck just hates mono blue aggro because it's just probably faster than it. <laughs> <laughs> now, and, and see... Don't you I... insult my party of one, it's my favourite card. I'm watching you. <laughs> as a guy who's played purple-white for most of the time, it, it like as I was building this deck, I, I felt myself thinking, you know, I've got the singing barrel. Oh, can I sneak in a harsh judge? Oh, can I sneak in maybe an uh oh? Because those white cards are oh, they're so great. I love them so much, and and they're so useful for other people who run control and key based decks that have like this one key card that you really, really, really need to get rid of. And you say bye bye. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing, the, the, the other thing that was kind of unfortunate for me, and, th and th 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 this is one of my major problems with the deck, is though, because we're running Factory Jack, we have a huge incentive to use Trading Divisions as our opening problem, because we want to get orange and purple right away. But the main problem is our new main, Applejack, she wants to confront right away. And that five in front yeah. is a little bit of an issue. Um, it's it's yeah. possible to confront it on turn two if you factory jack well, on turn like one. If you, but yeah, like if you get the AJ out turn one, it's not impossibly difficult. But in <laughs> yeah, but it, it's, it's a bit it, shaky. It's a, it's a vulnerability because if, if we're playing against say a, a control deck, uh, some guy who's running like Ambassador Twilight, for example, he's gonna he, he he's gonna flip over turn two and then play double toe maker if he can. And if he can block yeah. that problem off before we flip, then we're pretty much just screwed. Like not necessarily. We, we can maybe break it with a star. Not completely. You can probably you can probably fight your way back if you have any yeah. any good cards. Yeah. But it is a very big spanner in your works where you're gonna get when you really want to be. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. And it's my other <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and my other major concern uh, is how much this deck is reliant upon its purple. Like, so many of our important events are, uh, are uh, running purple requirement, and so we're very, like, supposing that we, that we hit, like, a semi-aggro mid-range deck who flips over our train traditions, then our purple entry is very vulnerable to uh, removal. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, I guess, as I said earlier, party is probably a game loss if you don't have a way to recover straight away. Yeah, in essence. Because it's just going to be like, I, I I, don't have barrels, so I can't play cards. Go? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, and, 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 but as I was looking, and, and, and the same thing is also true of our problem deck, it's, it's very purple dependent. Which is mostly just because purple has the good control problems. Orange doesn't really have that many good control problems. It's like... Oh. It's because orange, like... 
Orange problems like creating bigger and helping big friends hmm. because they like hay bale monster stack say puts flower counters around and it's just like considering how controlling orange can be there is no problems that really go with orange's control theme which i always found a bit weird yeah so one hopes that the new set would offer some support in that area for the main <laughs> yeah yeah so my, my general conclusion for running this deck is that it's the orange purple control deck still isn't quite there. It's it's still close, but it's still not quite where it needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I suppose yep. the other things that are worth pointing out um, for the audience also make uh, lots of people that I talk to. There's a huge running debate over whether you put Magicite in your deck or International Uh Which card is better, air quotes? Um, Why not both? Yes. <laughs> then again, a I'm running Mono Purple. Uh, then again, in my deck, I'm running Mono Purple, so... <laughs> yes, there's certainly an argument to, to be made for, to uh, just put in both. But um, So Portal has the benefits of being versatile. Uh, if especially when I'm running yes. a white, say, for example, and I throw down an Octavia Harsh Judge and I just uh, guess a card, and it turns out, oh, that was, a, that was a bad choice. I really want to reset my Octavia to, to do something that's actually important. I, I'm going to just portal her around. Um, various other things. Whereas Magicite only works on opposing friends. But the reason that it's great in this deck, obviously, is that Chaos Effect. Uh, when you yes, can because you're running the Doctor. Mm -hmm. And so, in orange, purple... But then I again, you... Sorry, I was going to say, with a um, portal, resets anything, so if they're running, you know, resources to stick on your friends or their own friends, if they diligent and it's a friend rather than just AJ, it all gets placed on top of the friend, uh, it can get reset by portal, which is one of its probably biggest upsides. Yes, yeah, it, uh, it, it's... Well, also, the portal is terrible against uh, Spitfire. Yes, very true. <laughs> <laughs> very true. And the uh, the other thing, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to make an argument for why Magicite is good, but I keep thinking of reasons why Portal is good. Portal can act as a combination unfrightened and move, because if you, if you, yes. if you Portal a frightened friend, it'll enter unfrightened. Uh, which is excellent. Very useful. Uh, yeah, and uh, the other thing, I guess, the uh, the troublemakers are, are worth talking about. Uh, for the longest time, I, I didn't run Nightmare Moon by Control Decks, but it's uh, first of all just to have that mixture of villain with non-villain to keep the opponent guessing is excellent, and secondly, that the disruption is just. You know, it's still great, right? It's uh, been great ever, ever since the game started. But with us having generally an AT advantage, us throwing away our hand is as big of a problem because we can draw back up, whereas the opponent probably going to be hating us. Yes, pretty much. And uh, the other thing, this uh, yeah, this Aramaspi, I, I. I was basically running it against Changeling Barricade. I'm thinking to myself, okay, because this deck, obviously, you, you, you want to have one non-epic filmmaker for you to uh, sit behind and, and confront. Yes. So I, 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 I kind of wanted to run Changeling Barricade here, but I just, I, I just felt like this, uh, this text to stop an epic opponent from from uh, parking on it is just it's it's it, it's too valuable to be replaced yeah but i understand that this is a like sometimes i run i've tyrant here sometimes i run other troublemakers this one's a little bit variable yeah like it usually just depends on local metagame rather than um expecting to play against when you're just playing games. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, if 
if you go to a high level tournament, the safest bet is probably. Uh, 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 I hate his name. It's so difficult to say sometimes. Aris Maspi or this whatever. Guy. Yeah. Because because FX is such an obvious shoe in deck that's good. But like a local group, say with mine, where none of us actually run that, probably be Chrissy easily. Because there's a lot of aggro and mid rangey stuff where they rely on friends, and if you can just take them, just be like, there, there you go. Indeed. <laughs> yep. Oh. <Aww. laughs> and I suppose also, uh, just to touch on her, since we haven't, put a finish is the control win condition and should be in every control deck, as far as I'm aware. Uh, even <laughs> even though oh, she's, oh my gosh. E e even though we have to put in a singing barrel just for her, she is yeah, like, the control. I have I have sat and debated for so long in the mono purple if I should run because I'm running gyro, one makeover and photo finish as like a two of because you just go go get makeover player, yep. <laughs> and it's just every time I sit there thinking about it, I'm like. Because <laughs> yeah. it's just so good. It's just... It is <laughs> outstanding, and, and I think. Oh. Uh, 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 sorry, there's a discussion to be had, and I don't know if we should have that discussion this episode over the fact that white having the ha, 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 sorry having the point scoring cards, white becomes so essential to other decks because it has like. No, it's got RTO, it's got, it's got photo finish, it's got the cards that score you points, and points are how you win, so white is good, therefore. And you know, is that like uh, good? Oh, uh, just to answer the chat, mm -hmm. the, missing, the missing card from this deck is the AJ main from the new set and the Sunset Shimmer that was made by a winner of... I can't remember what tourney. A big Europe tourney, that meticulous 2-1. Yeah. That's the missing cards. She's a three of, right? She's a three of, yes. For yeah, reasons which are rather <laughs> obvious. Uh, cards if you know of the card. <laughs> card is outstanding. Um, meticulous two is obviously great when we're flipping two cards for the face-off. And it's just good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know. You, you gave me a chance to comment on your deck, so I'll obviously give you the same chance to say what you will about mine. It a little bit feels like it's going to be using Twilight from the new set as its main as well, at the same time, when you look at just the deck list. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, it's basically things to test is say because it's zap it's ridiculous mm -hmm. uh what the deck prefers portal or magicite if you're trying to be sneaky and splash white what about that guy from premiere that lets you get events from discard because you're yeah. going to have a million action tokens you can pay that one f stop yes he is oh, um random controly things that gets done often that you could try and cram in here <laughs> yeah see the um I guess just this is just my preference. If you're doing card synergy, I usually like running three of each, which is why I was kind of confused at two nap cakes. Yeah, I, I one. My major issue is like there's a lot of control events that are good, and so I like the way that I build decks, or at least the way that I rough decks up as I first think about them. Is I, I I generally put in one copy. On pony head of all the cards that I want, or all, all all the cards that I think this card could be good, this card could, uh, could be good, and then I go through and I'm like, okay, three of all all the entries, three of the win conditions, etc. Et, et and then I look at how much space I have left over. And it's like, uh, I I don't really want to cut that card, so just make twos of those, and then I'm at forty five. Okay, that's fine. And, and and then you know, later after the, after the next scene, some testing, then I could tweak. Stuff around, yeah. The nap cakes at two is, <laughs> is is there because it's it's like useful. Y you're correct that I have the synergy with the glimmer. I could perhaps have considered uh, ma ma making it a three yeah. of instead. 
uh, and, and maybe going to just also, one on the rest in pieces or something like that. Yeah. Also, just because I think it's the best purple card ever, why isn't Gyro in here? Gyro. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he is another character. The guy that uh, gets you an event. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, certainly another card worth considering. He's a three purple requirement, I think? Three, yeah. Yeah. Yep, one cost, three requirement. Yes. So, we'll place it. another card definitely worth considering. Um, I found in my time, now granted, the other purple decks that I've ran use cover to cover, which gives you more meticulous. I find, like, Engine, it's like... Yeah, Come with enough, such a staple of control again. With mm -hmm. enough meticulous, the you tend to find the events anyway. Um, but it's it, it's true that uh, Gyro can give you that. I need this one particular card in, in, in this circumstance. Let's just get it. Um, so so certainly uh, another card that's on the radar. I suppose that's another thing actually that's that's worth talking about is the is the potential to go super greed and throw in both factory jacks and cover to covers and just oh yourself. well but the, the twilight decks do it because they are maining purple hmm. um so it's a lot easier with you it's a lot riskier yeah for sure but that it, it is so enticing to say okay turn one gain three at tap stuff gain six at okay do you concede yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just going to sit here and not have fun. <laughs> yes. Hey, can, can I get a few more D20s to put my AT on, please? Um, but yeah. Oh. It's a relatively standard control deck, as far as I'm concerned. I've, yeah. it's, it uh, follows the general template that I've run before. By the way, desperate yeah. time. There's nothing insanely shocking. Yeah. Can I flip uh, three cards every time <laughs> I'm defending a troublemaker? Yeah. Oh, it's, I love it. Uh, but yeah, that um, pretty much yeah. covers this deck. Uh, good to. Note. Did you do one for Rainbow? I I I wanted to actually, but I life got in the way, unfortunately. Okay, fair enough. Other things going on. Perhaps for next week, I'll uh, throw one together for Rainbow. <clears throat> and um, yeah. yeah, so that essentially covers what we wanted to talk about this week. Yes. Uh, <laughs> We are, as I said, much shorter stream than last time, but that's okay. Um, as for next episode, I wanted to propose something to you, Pauline. Um, Go on. So, we just had um, Pacific PonyCon was obviously the last one. There, uh, yeah. th th there were a few newish formats that were uh, debuted by the commentary as Magic People. At the Villain Challenge format, mm -hmm. which is obviously... Very interesting. Um, yeah. And uh, there was Team Sealed as well. And the th there was a thread that just went up for BabsCon as well, where there a, a, f a few new ones came in, the, uh, the, the new Nightmare format, where they essentially just removed the band list from Harmony, which is going to be fun, I'm sure. Um, and so I think perhaps... They're banned for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> just sits there crying in corner. <laughs> yeah. So... Perhaps why if... is it combo? <laughs> yeah, just faces the twentieth combo deck. Just oh, good. <laughs> I'm sure it's 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 going to be fun. Yeah. So I think perhaps we 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 we, we could have an episode talking about just formats in general. Um, yeah. So that's what I would say we should do. To be fair. That. A thing mm -hmm. I see people struggling to do all the time is to recreate Commander in uh, this card game. Yes. Because I honestly think it's something that's a bit too unique to how Magic's mechanics work for it to just sort of be applied to other games as much. Yeah. Like, But I love it, so I, I will work with other people to try and make it sort of exist. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, oh. yeah. So I, I, I think there's certainly a discussion to be had there, right? I would like yeah. to propose that we do that next week. Next week? Your next uh, uh, Sorry, week? next next episode. <laughs> My apologies. Tom. Oh, We'll need to make like the eight foot long list of all the formats that people have created now. Hmm. Okay, so come back two weeks from now. We'll have a few more new decks to talk about. We'll have new cards. We'll talk about formats too. Yes. <laughs> Uh, unless you have anything else you want to say, Salvi? Um, hmm. No, I can't think of anything. <laughs> All righty. Well, then, uh, thank you to everybody for uh, going out and listening to our jibber. Uh, the video is going to be up on our YouTube channel probably sometime shortly. Besides Soon. that, <laughs> till next time, I'm Curse Chords. And I'm solving problems. See you, See you in a fortnight. <laughs>